So, John Bennett, what is the story in terms of what's on and what's not on? And who, who's allowed to take it on and take it off, as, it said, as the Korean doctor once said? <laughs> Um, well, okay, if, the, if that was seen through a shared health summary, if we go with that particular premise, um, if I'd been doing it, uh, we would have discussed the contents of his medical record, both around allergies, adverse events, medications, past medical history and any immunisations. And hopefully with some understanding and some time, he would have given consent for all the elements that were represented in that summary to be posted to the record. And if you're dealing with somebody who's got a bit of cognitive impairment, what do you do then? Well, that's a harder question in lots of ways, whether you're sending a paper record or an electronic one. It's, it's, it's spending the time to try and gain a belief that they're competent to understand what they're doing, and that's not easy always. So, Ashley, given that the power to decide really what's on the record last, is a personally controlled electronic health record, as it should be, um, and the power's within the consumer, what's the liability here in terms of this could be quite a distorted record of a person's real history if we're going to rely on it for safe, high-quality care. Um, <clears throat> well, I think the issue that arises here is that you're not going to be liable for what the patient doesn't tell you, but the question is whether you asked. So if there's an incomplete record, it, 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 it's again coming back to the document trail, but it's a more fundamental point than that, which is there can't be a running assumption uh, that those records are necessarily complete because the patient controls them. So it's not a replacement, um, not being a, a GP myself, but it's obviously not a, re a replacement for taking a history from the patient, orally. Mark, what's the consumer organisation's position when, you know, in terms of advice here, given that, in, in essence, its strength and weakness is that it's per personally controlled? Well, well, we believe that it is the patient's or consumer's record and therefore it should be controlled by the consumer. Um, but it's in the consumer's own interest uh, to be as thorough as possible. Um, but there may be occasions when, for whatever reason, they don't want to actually um, have something that can be viewed by, by others. My, my understanding is that, in fact, the, uh, everything goes onto the record, but then uh, the consumer can actually uh, um, authorise people to see different parts of it. And we have, and John, we have a, a, a trail, and if there's somebody's changed it, we can track that on, this, on the system? So if the consumer's gone on and removed something, you know it's been done? Um, oh, okay, tr okay, okay, two things on that. There's an audit trial, because one of the questions is about people being, yes, it's an audit trial, so a consumer can see who's viewed their record. Yeah. Um, can a doctor see who's changed it? Well, okay, the, okay, there's two things on that. With, within, an, within an individual record, it can't be changed. So if you've posted a particular document like a shared health summary, the only way that can be altered is to have it removed. Right, so you can't change the words on it, it's got to no, go. No, no, it's the actual um, all or nothing, if you like. And then you put on a new one? Yes, yes. Right. With or with, yeah, with... And is there a trail of, of so you, you can't see what was there before, you can only no, see the latest version? No, because that's part of the consumer control. The person's not happy with the contents of that record, either through something that they don't want there or an omission to update it, that, is then, that then can be removed with the consumer's consent. And as a matter of interest, can advanced care directives be on there? Uh, not the directive itself, but um, a hint as to where the location might be, like uh, the lawyer's office, for example, where mine's certainly kept at the moment, you'd say that... Uh, uh, that it's available uh, at um, Chris McKelvey's rooms in Tuong. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an annotation to the, to the record that's visible right. to all. Yeah, it's a pointer. So, yeah. Ashley, I'm assuming then that the prudent advice is that if Krista's got a hold of the electronic record from the person, uh, you've really got to double check that that information is accurate if the patient is conscious. Uh, short answer is yes. Uh, whether, but again, it's a question of reasonable steps. So what's realistically possible in a clinical scenario is going to vary. But, you know, these, and, and the point was made before, these are to some extent the same issues that people have been dealing with for years with records that were less electronic. So they're not necessarily novel issues in that sense. I suppose the, the trap might be, uh, and it's been brought out in some of the scenarios, that people, by virtue of the fact that they're electronic um, systems and they're supposed to be modern and up-to-date and the rest of it, um, 
consumers might assume that they're going to be more up to date than they actually are from Sorry, that perspective. Got to be careful. Well, what happened to Max was that about a year later he had a massive stroke and died and uh, was cremated, but nobody had on any record they did a pacemaker in and he blew up the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please thank our panel? <laughs> Could you please thank um, our award-winning actors, uh, Rob Walters and Nicola Davis, who uh, wrote the scenario and can take full blame along with me for uh, what occurred today. And of course, this is the great yonder. This is what everybody is hoping for. And um, no implementation was easy uh, ever in IT. And this one will not be smooth. It will have its bumps but everybody wants it. We cannot have a system with the complexity that it has nowadays, with the acuity that it has nowadays, without an electronic health record. And when you talk to the people who know, they say Australia is at the front here. Um, we are ahead of almost every other country in the world, apart from perhaps Denmark, Mark, and apart from perhaps parts of the Northern Territory. So we're actually doing pretty well. And what you are, you are the pioneers, and there will be a bit of agony, but it's going to be an important exercise. So thank you for joining us for this hypothetical. Thank you.